Dice section. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we are just going to go ahead and hop into it. So if you are in a classroom, uh, your teacher might have shared uh, a document with you. So Amanda, if you want to go ahead and show us the worksheet. Uh, so you might have a worksheet that looks like this if you want to follow along with our trout dissection today. So we are going to be going over each one of these body parts and more and learning what exactly the function of them is. Perfect. So go ahead and take that down, Amanda, and we are just going to go ahead and jump into it. So today we are going to be uh, dissecting a trout. So this particular trout is a rainbow trout. So this is the same sort of trout that we are raising uh, on our live stream cam, or you might have them in your classroom as well. This trout came from the Mason Valley Hatchery. Uh, so it came to us so that we could teach you all about a little bit more about trout today. So like I said, this is a rainbow trout, but it has lost a little bit of its coloration uh, due to the freezing process. But we are going to uh, investigate this trout and learn a lot more about it and how it functions. So let's just go ahead and start with the outside of the trout. So on the outside, we have scales covering this trout. And we are going to be using the chat throughout today's program because I want to hear from you about what you think you're looking at and what exactly you think those the function of um, each one of these different body parts is. So go ahead and open up your chat and put in what you think the function of the scales on a trout are. And it is really important that we make sure that we are only putting things in the chat that I am asking for. So make sure that everything you're putting in there is on topic so that we can keep the chat open throughout the whole program. So go ahead and put in there what you think the function of the scales on the outside of a fish are for. Protection against bacterial infection, I like it. What else? What else do we think the scales might do? Any other guesses? Easier to swim, protection, awesome. You are all right on. Yes, so the main function of the scales is for protection of, of the fish. It exactly, it is an outer covering that is going to protect them. In addition to being an outer covering, they also have different colors that is going to help the fish as well. So if you look on top, the top of the fish is pretty dark and that is a type of camouflage that is going to help our trout. So if you imagine you're a predator, maybe an osprey looking down on the trout, this dark color here is going to help it blend in with the stream bottom. So it's pretty dark. Um, and so it's gonna blend in with those rocks on the bottom. But if we look at the bottom of the trout, you can see it's pretty light colored. So it's very light compared to the top of the trout. And that is again, if a predator is underneath the trout looking up at it, then it won't be able to see it very well because it's gonna blend in with sunlight coming down on the water. So those are both forms of camouflage that our trout has. So next is something else that covers the outside of the body. So have you ever caught a trout? Have you ever touched a fish of any kind? What did it feel like? So go ahead and put in the chat what a fish feels like when you touch it. We've got slimy, slimy, slimy. Everybody says fish are very slimy. And yes, that is absolutely accurate. And that slime is actually really important for trout. Um, so that slime is another form of protection that is going to keep them safe. So the slime not only pre prevents against bacteria and infection or even parasites, but if you've ever tried to pick up a trout, you notice that it slips right through your fingers. So that means that it's easier for the trout to get away from other predators because it's so slippery, it's hard to hold on to them. And that means it's easier for them to be able to move through the water. So there's less friction holding them back so they can move through the water a lot easier. So that slime, again, is super, super important. So if you ever go fishing and you are doing catch and release, which means that you are um, catching the fish, but you intend to put it back in the water, um, you wanna make sure that you get your hands wet before touching the trout, because if your hands are dry, they can take off some of that slime that again is super, super important for our trout. So if you're gonna put it back, make sure you get your hands wet first. All right, next, we are going to take a look at the fins and we are going to launch our very first poll. 
Uh, so there should be a poll popping up on your screen. And the question is, what is the main purpose of fins? So trout have all kinds of fins all over the body. What is the purpose of those fins? Is it speed and forward movement? Is it steering and balance? Or do they use them to defend their territories against other trout? All of these different kinds of fins we've got here. All right, we're looking pretty split between our answers that I see coming in. All right, let's go ahead and stop that poll and go ahead and share our results. So we have 36% um, saying speed and forward movement and 64% saying steering and balance. So good job, everybody. Nobody fell for the fins being to defend territories. But um, we do have a majority with the right answer that the main purpose of fins is mostly for steering and balance. So one of their fins is the main fin that is responsible for forward movement. And that's going to be the tail fin here or the caudal fin. So this one is just a fake fish mount, but it's a lot bigger. So I'm able to show you the fins a little bit better. So this one back here, the caudal fin or the tail fin is what is responsible for propelling the fish forward. That and its super strong body muscles that go throughout the entire body. But the rest of the fins are mostly to just help the uh, trout stay upright. So this one is called the dorsal fin. That is to help the trout keep from tipping over one way or the other. And then we have the anal fins and the pelvic fins down here. Both of those are again for balance, just to help keep the trout upright. And then these two up here, these are the pectoral fins and pectoral fins are there to help the trout change directions while it's swimming. So that is how it turns one way or the other. That guy back up. But the really the only fin that is helping it propel forward is going to be this tail fin by uh, flipping back and forth. They have really strong muscles that allow it to be able to do that. All right, the next thing we are gonna look at on our trout is something called the lateral line. So if you see, you can actually see it pretty well, running down the side of the trout here, all the way down the side of the body is a line that runs down the fish and that is called a lateral line. Amanda is gonna go ahead and put up a picture of what the lateral line looks like so you can see it again um, in a better picture. But the lateral line is uh, like a sensory organ for the fish. So humans have our senses. So we have our seeing, our hearing, our touch. Those are some of our senses. And they have an additional one, this lateral line that you can see in that picture. And that is helping them um, understand some of the movements and the pressure in the water. And that is going to allow them to know if there is a predator or even prey in the area because they can sense those additional movements by using that lateral line. All right, thank you. Go ahead and put that picture down. Perfect. All right, we have a few more things on our external part of our fish that we wanna take a look at. So next we are going to talk about the eyes. So trout have really good um, eyesight. So what's different about their eyes versus human eyes is they do not have an eyelid, so they can't really close their eyes. And their pupil, that black part there in the middle, is the same all the time. Our pupil changes, it gets um, bigger and smaller depending on the amount of light, but they have the same size pupil all the time. Uh, to let in lots of light because they're often in dark waters and they need to be able to see pretty well. So they need those big pupils to let in lots of light. And they have the ability to see almost 360 degrees around. Um, not quite, they do have a tiny little blind spot, but they have really excellent eyesight so that they can keep an eye out for predators and help that um, have their eyesight use them to help them find their prey as well. Inside of that eye, they have something called a lens. So I have a tiny little lens on this <laughs> post-it note for you. That is a tiny little, it's like a spherical, kind of looks like a pearl. And that is actually inside of their eye, helping them to have that really amazing vision. In addition to their eyes, they also have two tiny little nares 
here on the side of their nose. So go ahead and put in the chat what you think the nares do. The nares or the nostrils they're called. So they're just tiny little holes. There's one and there's one, tiny little holes. What do you think the nares do or nostrils? What's the purpose of them? We have some guesses that say smell, sense for predators maybe, help them filter water, help them breathe, smell again. Awesome, so we've got a couple of right answers in there. The main purpose of those nares is to smell, exactly. So that is their, their main function is they have a really good sense of smell, again, for smelling for predators, uh, to keep an eye out for prey so they can smell their prey, they can smell chemicals in the water. But what's different about their nose versus a human nose our nose is for smelling, but is also for breathing as well. But they do not breathe through their nose at all. So that is not one of the things that they are going to be using their nose for. All right, so next is this little guy right here. This is called an operculum or a gill plate is another word for it. And as you might imagine, the gill plate is there to protect the gills, which are inside. So compared to the rest of the, the fish, this is pretty hard. So it's a hard outer covering that is there to um, protect the gills of the trout. And I am actually going to cut that off. So I'm gonna adjust my screen here. I am going to cut off the outside, this gill plate here, so we can take a better look at the gills. So here we can see the gills and there's lots of different layers of them in there. So all of this um, red part is called the filament. So that red part, these, there's tiny little strands coming off of it. That is what's going to um, help them get the oxygen out of the water. So that is our main function of the gills. But I am going to take a piece out and show you something really cool. So in the gills, there are these tiny little white parts here. So go ahead and put into the chat what you think these tiny white teeth looking things do on the gills. Trying to hold it up a little bit better. Yeah, those tiny little white things there. We've got some guesses that say get air out of the water. We have protection. What do you think these little white teeth thing do? Filter the dirty water, breathe. All right, those are all really good guesses. So these little things are called the rakers. If we wanna go ahead and put up a picture, a better picture to show what the rakers look like. And the main function of these rakers is to make sure that food doesn't get stuck in the gills. So you can see there a better picture. We've got that bright red filament part, and then we have the arch, and then each of these little teeth things, those are the rakers. And that is to make sure that food doesn't get stuck in the gills because the mouth is what is going to take in water and then pass that water over the gills. But the mouth is also where the fish takes in food. So we need some sort of protection so that the food doesn't get stuck in the gills or doesn't just pass through them. So that's what the rakers do. They catch any food bits and make sure that they go down to the stomach, um, but allows all of the water to pass through so that it can um, still get the oxygen out of the water. Perfect. So we are actually gonna go ahead and get into our trout. So this part is gonna get a little ooey gooey, but just bear with me. We're gonna get to see some really cool stuff. I'm gonna put a gill plate over here. So I'm gonna be putting the parts of our trout on my trout um, diagram over here. So we remember what each one of those are. Okay. So to dissect a trout, I'm going to start down at the bottom at the vent. And the vent is where the trout expels waste. So when it's done with its food, after it's gotten all the nutrients out, it expels the waste of the vent. 
and then cut, cut all the way up the body. And up the side. All right, so we're getting our first look inside of the trout. And I'm just going to cut this piece off so everybody can see a little bit better. All right, so this is the internal organs of our trout. So the very first thing I want to show you is right inside here, this shiny little bubble looking thing. Does anyone have any guesses what this shiny bubble thing is or what it does? So right inside here, go ahead and put in the chat what you think this thing might do. It is very thin and full of air, actually. We've got bladder, liver, swim bladder. There it is. So somebody knows that guy right there is the swim bladder. So the swim bladder is basically what helps the fish be able to float without a lot of energy. So if you were in the water, you have to kick or uh, move your arms a lot to be able to float, but a trout doesn't have to do that because they have this air bladder, also called a swim bladder, that they can fill up with air that allows them to be able to float. And they can actually put more air or less air in it, depending on where they want to be in the water. So if they want to go down lower in the water, maybe get to a cooler spot, they can let air out and that will allow them to sink down. Or they can put more air in it and it allows them to come closer to the surface. So that allows them to just be able to hang out in the water uh, at different levels using that air bladder. Awesome. The next guy we're gonna get into is this bright red thing right here. Go ahead and put in the chat what you think that might be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get it out. We can take a better look at it. We've got lots of guesses for heart and liver, kidney or heart. All right, we've got lots of good guesses. So this particular thing right here is actually the liver. So heart is a very good guess based on the color. It's definitely got the coloration of a heart and the location, but this one is not the heart. We'll take a closer look at that in a little bit. So this guy is the liver. Do we have any guesses on what the liver does? What's the function of a liver? pretty big organ, so it seems to be pretty important. Pushes out blood, that's a good guess. Any other guesses? So the function of the liver is it does help to remove toxins, uh, but its main purpose is that it helps aid in digestion. So the liver produces something called bile and bile helps with digestion. And it's kind of hard to see, but attached to the liver is something called the gallbladder. So go ahead and launch our next poll. And we are gonna see what the gallbladder does. So I'm gonna ask everybody what they think the purpose of a gallbladder is. So the gallbladder is attached to the liver. All right. Can we launch our next poll? There we go. Perfect. Okay, you should have a poll up on your screen. And it says, what is the function of the gallbladder? So secretes bile for digestion, filters blood to help the immune system, or makes red blood cells. What do we think? So it's just this little guy that is attached to the liver. 
It's translucent, translucent, so it's kind of see-through and it's very, very small, so it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna go ahead and put this liver on our trout. All right, we're gonna go ahead and share those results. So the function of the gallbladder, 24% says secretes bile for digestion. Uh, overwhelming majority says it filters blood to help the immune system and 15% say makes red blood cells. So actually the purpose of the gallbladder is number one, secretes bile for digestion. So bile is something that is going to help break down fats in a fish. So that is what bile does. So it's super helpful to be able to digest food. Awesome job, everyone. All right, I'm gonna turn this back around. So the next thing that we are going to look at is the esophagus. So the esophagus is right here. It is a tube-like structure. So go ahead and put in the chat what you think the esophagus does. So it's this pretty hard tube structure right at the front of the trout. What do we think the purpose of the esophagus is? Helps to eat. Good guess. So yes, the esophagus is there to help transport food to the stomach, exactly. I've got some guesses, pulls food down to the stomach, helps food go to the stomach, awesome. So food is going to come in through the trout's mouth and the trout does have little tiny teeth. They are small, but very, very sharp. And it also has teeth on its tongue and that is going to be helping to um, hold on to that food and then move it back into the mouth. So I'm actually gonna take this probe and put it in the mouth of the trout and down into the esophagus. And you can actually see when I move my probe, I am moving the esophagus and moving the stomach organs in there. So you can see it is all connected. So that probe goes down into the esophagus and then right here is the stomach. So the stomach is kind of this U-shaped organ right here, it's kind of greenish. So the food goes into the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach where it starts to be digested. So that's where it starts to break down some of that food. And after it gets broken down, it moves into the intestines. So we have a bunch of different intestines in here. And the intestines are there to actually absorb the nutrients. So they are the part where it starts to soak up all of the good part of the food. All right, so I'm going to take the esophagus and the stomach and each one of those different organs. And with it comes the air bladder as well. So if you were ever to go fishing and you wanted to eat a fish, this process I'm doing is basically what you would do in order to clean out a fish. So you would just take out all of these internal organs and then the part that's left here, this part is the actual fish fillet. So that's the part you would eat. All right, so you can see we have the stomach and the intestines, and this also gives you a much better view of that swim bladder or air bladder. So you can see there is still a little bit of air left in it, which is pretty neat. On the back side here is this little tiny red organ, this little red guy, and that is called the spleen. So the spleen is super helpful because it uh, like a blood filter. So it is going to get rid of any um, defective blood cells. So blood cells that don't work anymore, the spleen is going to help get rid of them. All right, so I'm adding to my trout over here. We've got our stomach and intestines, our liver, our gills. We've got lots of different pieces. We are missing a pretty important organ, the heart. So I'm gonna pull out the heart. So the heart, is right up here, this little tiny red guy right there, right behind the gills and this front pectoral fin. 
right here is the heart. So put in the chat what we think the heart does. What's the function of the heart? Um, to help it live, pump blood, helps it pump blood. Awesome. Good job, everyone. Yes, pumps blood, exactly. And somebody is definitely right. You cannot live without pumping blood. So the heart is pretty small compared to maybe the liver or some of our other organs. Um, and it's kind of triangular shaped. And what's different about a trout heart is it only has two chambers, unlike a human heart has four different chambers. So uh, just these two chambers to help it circulate the blood through the body. Go ahead and put that on our map of our trout here. All right, and we are down to just um, one main organ that is left. This thing running across the back of the spine. What do we think this bright red organ running along the side of it is? Got multiple guesses for kidney, spinal cord, kidney, lots of guesses for kidney. Exactly, you all have it exactly right. This is the kidney that runs along the entire length of the fish. So it is very different looking than our kidney. Does anyone know what our kidney looks like? What shape it is? So our kidney is, um, if you've ever eaten kidney beans, uh, they look exactly like that. Yes, bean shaped, exactly. A broken U, those are all excellent examples, yes. So our kidney is more shaped like this, and this one is very long, so it's very different shaped than our kidney. Any guesses on what the kidney does? What is the purpose of the kidney in a trout? Any ideas what a kidney might do? Cleans the blood, that's a good guess. Helps you live, absolutely. Yeah, so the kidney is definitely helps you live by being a filter. So it is the main filter for the body. And especially in trout, it's important because it helps them uh, maintain the right level of water and salt in their body. So they don't want to get too salty or have too much water in their body. So that's what the kidney does. And it's kind of hard to get out because it is pretty attached to the back of the fish. And it's also very gelatinous. So it kind of feels like jelly. So it's hard to be able to get it out. And then behind the kidney is, of course, the spinal cord, which we can't see super well. It's part of our kidney. All right. And then we can see some of the structure. We've got some of the bones of the fish that you can see here as well. All right, everybody. Well, that is just about all of our main um, functions of our trout. So those are all of its main internal and external organs that we are able to see on this trout. So we can learn a lot about other animals and how they function. Do we have any questions that we have not gotten to yet? We have a couple. All right, I'm gonna this so I can see everyone. So, so someone asked what are scales made of? What are scales made of? Jan, do you know what scales are actually made of? So they are actually starting to come off a little bit with my frozen trout here. Sorry, I'm here. here. Do you know what scales are made of? So not without looking it up, but I would have to um, similar to our own. 
Calcium. Calcium. So, so something, something that would be the best guess. Best guess. Amanda knows. It's, it's yeah. keratin. Yeah. What, is it? what is it? Keratin. Yeah, so the same so stuff. Same stuff yes. Yeah. So keratin is the same stuff as our hair and our fingernails. So it's just super thin layers of keratin. And the way they're stacked on top of each other is kind of like armor to help protect the trout. So they're they're um, overlapping on one another to help protect our trout. Question. Let's see what else. Is the heart the smallest thing in the body? So um, out of the organs that we looked at today, I think it might be. Um, the heart was pretty small. The heart again. So there's the, the little tiny heart, it's relatively small, um, but the gallbladder is pretty small as well. It was just attached to the outside of the kidney um, and the spleen is quite small as well. Um, I see another question, what do the intestines do? So the intestines are after the uh, food has moved into the stomach. So the food starts in the stomach and is where it starts to break down the food, but then it moves into the intestines and the intestines absorb nutrients. So that is where it starts to um, absorb all of the good stuff out of the food that is going to help the trout to survive. So they absorb nutrients. What color is the heart? So it's bright red heart. So you'll, I'll show it to you. Bright red. What else? Does um, the trout have anything for defense? So its main defense adaptation is going to be that camouflage. So we looked at it earlier that it was, has the dark color on top that is going to help it camouflage with the, the dark bo uh, stream bottom. And then the light on the bottom is going to help it camouflage with light coming through um, the top of the water. So it's got a really dark top. You can even see it kind of blends in with my, my shirt in the background. So that is its main um, defensive adaptation is going to be camouflage. And they're also pretty fast. So the, the shape of a trout, so they're what we call torpedo shaped. They're long and skinny. That helps them be really fast to be able to escape other predators. So that is a good defense adaptation as well. Um, what does the nostrils do? So the nostrils are there um, to smell is the main, their main purpose. They need to be able to smell, but they're different than our nostrils because they do not breathe through their nostrils. They are only there for smelling. Um, we have a question, where is the brain? What color is it and how big is it? So I will try <laughs> to get to the brain. Um, it's a messy process, so I'm not going to do it on camera, but I'll keep answering questions while I try to get to the brain. Um, it is pretty small and um, it kind of looks a lot like a human brain, honestly. It is small and it has lobes and it's pink colored. So I'll see if I can get to the brain. Um, are there any other questions I haven't gotten to? Um, someone was asking the pressure and what the caudal fin does. The caudal fin. So the caudal fin is our tail fin, this one right here. Um, and the caudal fin is the main fin that is going to propel the fish forward. So that's how it moves, is by flicking that caudal fin back and forth, and it has really super strong muscles. And yeah. what does the caudal fin do? The pectoral fins, the pectoral fins are there so we can change directions. So they can flick their fins one way or the other, and that's going to be steering and to change directions. And then what does the liver Sorry, you cut out. Was that the liver? Yes. yes. The liver. So the liver um, helps to filter toxins, but also it um, makes bile. So it is going to help with digestion by creating bile, which helps break down fats. So you can write that it helps digestion or filters toxins. It does both. And then what does the kidney do again? Um, the kidney is the main filter for the body, 
and helps to maintain our salt and water balance. Someone's asking if you think that with a parent's assistance, uh, they could clean out a trout themselves. Absolutely. Um, I did not use very uh, technical equipment. I just have a pair of scissors and a cutting board <laughs> and some gloves is really all you need. Um, so absolutely with a parent's help and them being willing to get a little bit messy, you could definitely clean out a trout. So you could make sure that you uh, so you could catch it, make sure you have um, everything you need to legally catch a trout. So if, depending on your age, you might need a fishing license um, or your parent would need a fishing license. Um, and then you can keep your trout and bring it home and clean it. And after you clean it, you can eat it if you want. All right. Um, someone's asking what the dorsal fin does. So the dorsal fin is that top fin and the top fin is there uh, to help keep them from tipping over basically. Then someone is asking whether or not trout's stomach have gastric or hydrochloric acid. I am sure it has some kind of acid to help break down food, but I do not know what kind. <laughs> Looking at it, it looks like it depends on the species of fit. So I did not do a good job getting into the brain. Um, it is very difficult to get into um, because that is there's a lot of um, bone there at the top that is um, protecting it, a lot of cartilage. Um, but if you look at your your trout. Um, posters or diagrams. Um, it is just at the top of the head and it's just a little it's a little guy, maybe this big. Um, but honestly, it does look a lot like a human brain because it's got little lobes and it's um, pink colored, pinkish yellow colored, and it's not very big. And we have a question about the lateral line. So the lateral line was running down the outside of the fish. Um, and that helps it to sense movement in the water. So movement of the water or vibrations. So that allows it to detect predators in the area or prey. Um, the gonad, so that is the reproductive organ of the fish. So it's different depending on whether it is a male or a female. And somebody asked if I could get the brain out. No, I cannot get the brain out. It is um, very difficult to get to and I tried, but it did did not do a good job. So unfortunately, I'm not able to show you the brain. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any other open questions. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you all again for our next webinar on Thursday. Thanks so much, everybody.